I, uh, I also know that I'm mainstream uh, because uh, a few months ago, uh, I performed at a benefit, Tony LaRusso's benefit, in St. Louis, Missouri, um, for animal rescue. And I followed onto the stage Vince Gill. And it doesn't get it any more fucking mainstream than that. <laughs> now, I know that some of you don't know who Vince Gill is. And that's because you don't listen to country music. And I know you don't listen to country music because a lot of it is shit. <laughs> a lot of it, a lot of it, quite honestly, is based on old Jerry Springer episodes. <laughs> but Vince Gill is a country music legend and icon. And, uh, I have thought that I'd followed possibly every type of act um, because for 20 years I toured clubs in the country and comics performed before me that were just, some were just, they would scare the shit out of you. <laughs> People who the audience, when I got on stage, the audience was still screaming, fuck you too! The strangest act I ever followed onto the stage was in a club in Parma, Ohio. This comedian ended his set. Uh, he was talking about how um, he was in the delivery room when his wife gave birth. And he said that he noticed that her, now I'm quoting, <laughs> her pussy got bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> and a, a couple of months later, he was thinking about having oral sex with her, or as he put it, going down on her. And he thought back to that moment in the delivery room <laughs> and felt, what if her pussy gets bigger and bigger? Hang in there, you're adults! Her pussy gets bigger and bigger and snaps over my head. And my head be inside her pussy. And now here's Lewis Black. I thought that was as strange as it could get. And then I had to follow Vince Gill. Vince Gill is six foot seven, but with his star quality, he's 12 feet tall. And he strode onto that stage and 8,000 people went completely nuts. They were huge fans of his and he began to sing and I'd never ever been in his presence while he was singing and let me just tell you this, that after 30 seconds, I felt exactly the way I feel when I'm taking a bath that is just the perfect temperature. <laughs> By the end of the song, I can't tell you what he was singing about, but I know I have never been that comfortable in my whole life. <laughs> And then he told a story, a really funny story, a really clean, funny story, <laughs> a clean, funny story where he never said the word fuck once, a fucking clean, funny, fucking story. Son of a bitch, it was goddamn fucking funny. I was laughing my tits off at his clean story. And then Vince began to talk about his father. His dead father. Son of a bitch. He's pulling out the dead father card. That's a hard one to trump. And his father was a great and wonderful man. He was not only a redneck, he was a judge. He was everything to everyone. 
He was the greatest man that ever walked the earth. And all I kept thinking was, shit, I don't have time to go home and kill mine. <laughs> and Vince said, as his father got sicker and sicker, he pulled Vince aside and told him that he had the, an idea for a song that he always wanted Vince to write. And Vince couldn't get it written before his father died, but, but after he died, he found the inspiration to write that song. And now, he was gonna sing it. Who's not gonna like that song? <laughs> and it was a great song. It was sad and, son of a bitch, it was funny. <laughs> it was really funny. The refrain of that song was, how can I kiss those lips at night that have been chewing my ass out all day long? <laughs> If you didn't laugh at that, you're fucking brain dead. <laughs> and now he's set the bar for the, the kind of bad words you can use. And you can say ass in reference to your ass, your physical ass. As in, he said the word ass. <laughs> I thought he was gonna say hiney. Now I'm standing off stage and I'm going through my fucking act getting rid of all the bad words. I've got about two minutes of stage time. <laughs> and then, his wife came on stage. His wife, if you don't know, is Amy Grant. And if you don't know who Amy Grant is, you should. She is the greatest Christian singer in all of Christendom. <laughs> and she is made entirely out of cream. <laughs> I know, because I stood behind her and poked. Boop, bloop. and she's perfect. She's fucking perfect. The only thought I had as I stood next to her was, Lewis, you're a despicable piece of shit. You're a despicable piece of shit. Now she comes on the stage and she kisses him. Oh, really? The two of you had to kiss, you fucking fucks. Are you shitting me? Haven't you taken enough from me? <laughs> you were just standing there. She was just standing there. He's been gone 12 minutes. There was no fucking reason for that. <laughs> now, when it comes to love, I am the most jaded fuck in the universe. But I have to say, when the two of them kissed, you could feel their love. It, it, it went in waves over the audience. I was knocked over by a riptide of their love. <laughs> Son of a bitch. How will I, a Jew, ever know Christian love? <laughs> My friends, many have been married for years and I've never seen that kind of love. I thought I'm never gonna feel that. And then I realized I did, but I felt it for just an instant um, when I was on a golf course. <laughs> and I hit a hole in one. <laughs> and I still have the ball, uh, but I don't kiss it, not in public. <laughs> and then Amy began to sing 
like an angel. And as angels are wont to do, she was singing about Jesus. I turned to my friend Kathleen Madigan, a terrific comedian. Yeah. She had gotten me the gig. And I said, hey, take a good look at the time and remember it, because this is the precise moment that our friendship has ended. <laughs> I actually had to leave while she was singing, um, because uh, I felt that if I, I stayed there, I would rush the stage and accept Christ into my heart <laughs> as my one true savior. And then Vince and Amy left the building on the wings of angels. <laughs> and now, here's Lewis Black. I came onto the stage and I said that whoever had put together the order of the acts that evening, I wanted whoever that was to join me on stage. <laughs> because I was gonna use the next 30 minutes to just beat the shit out of them. <laughs> I said, who the fuck comes up with that kind of order? Here are two perfect Christians and now let's follow it with the miserable aging Jewish prick. <laughs> 